This is a 1942 John Deere Model H. It's been restored by Dennis Collier here in Four Oaks, North Carolina. These tractors were the smallest tractor you could buy from John Deere that were made in Waterloo, Iowa. They were made from 1939 to 1946 when it was replaced by the Model MT. A little bigger, a little more horsepower, newer tractor. So yeah, these things could run on kerosene. What you would do is you would pour you know, two tanks. One's for gasoline for when the tractor is still cold, and then when the tractor's warmed out in the field a little bit, you switch it straight to kerosene, no problem at all. In this case, this tractor's just running gasoline because it's not being used for work. We're just running it around for maybe less than less than 15 minutes. So yeah. We're going to show you guys around this tractor and some of the features you got back in 1942. So let's start with a little bit of overview. First of all, let's meet Mr. Dennis Collier. How are you doing today? How are you? Awesome. So tell us a little bit of a story about how you got this tractor and a little bit of the, you know, the background of restoring it and everything. Uh, I've got this tractor somewhere around... Uh, about 35 years ago from a, a dub bizzle of micro uh, mm -hmm. where I got it. I do believe it's the one that, uh, it, it came from there. And uh, and we gradually restored it. Actually, Robbie done the biggest work when he was a little boy. Uh, it sat out down by that clothesline for a long time and it needed some work to, to the engine and the block needed board. So we, we had bought some uh, brand new parts from uh, A.Z. Thompson, Selmer. He had a, a junk yard out there, and he had bought out the John Deere place somewhere around uh, 1960. And he, John Deere place had a lot of two-cylinder parts. And amongst that stuff, we found this block. And we've had it over years. And so if I said, hey, we're going to do something about that engine instead of boarding that block with an oversized pistol, why don't we just put a, that brand new block in there? So we put them used pistons in that thing with new rings, tighten up the bearings on it. And that's uh, uh, probably why the reason it runs so good, because we ain't never done nothing to it since then. Uh, I mean, it's just been a mighty good running old thing, and and we, uh, we've we enjoyed over the years. We've Actually, we painted it two times already, I believe. So we, first time around, then we started with the paint getting kind of old, so we put another coat of paint on it. And first time we painted with John Deere paint, but this time we put uh, short wheels on it. And we, we like that a little bit better. And we got new tires on the front. We ain't never put new tires on the rear. On the front. And, uh, it's been very, very, very good. Uh, uh, I had, I was raised on these, on my daddy. Uh, we farmed their cones for silver, and uh, we had two of these things. And the, the second one we bought for fifty dollars had one wheel in front, had two wheels on it. One pedal broke off, and we uh, uh, kept it around, and it run so good, and got cultivators with it, and all. And but we want a truck back there, so we took it down. So since we got the wheel bro broke off our front. So let's take the torch and cut the uh, reactors off. And so we can cut tobacco with it. And we did cut tobacco with this thing. So you cut one of the... Two off, both sides. But both sides off. So we can cut tobacco with it because the other H was out wide, two row, and you can't go down there and cut tobacco with that thing. So we had a, we needed to try to cut uh, tobacco with it. So mm. it worked out good for uh, cutting tobacco. It won't fast. But uh, it was, at least it goes through the field pretty fast. So, uh, oh, H is a very good tractor. First time we ever put kerosene in them, though. You talk about kerosene. Well, I heard you talk about kerosene while ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, believe it or not, before we called kerosene kerosene, the name of that flu uh, fuel was distilled. Uh, a bypass throwaway fuel that oil companies had couldn't get rid of. They would almost give it to you if you let them haul it out there and pay for hauling it out to you. And that's really, a distillate was really used because it was almost nothing price-wise. But, see, John Deere started in the beginning 
not particularly this tractor, but before this tractor came along, they made uh, tractors to burn anything flammable, meaning anything flammable. Matter of fact, I was shot on for five years, and so I got a book on that thing. I don't find out what they're talking about. Uh, what will it burn in this tractor? And I got up a, um, let me think, a D. A D, and it's read up on the specs on that thing, and it says it started out with, naturally, it burned gasoline, yes. Kerosene, distill it, uh, uh, diesel fuel, and then one more, crude oil. Crude it oil. Would burn crude oil. Of course, it had to be that light kind. It can't be that heavy, uh, heavy, but it would be a, still a crude oil coming out straight out of the ground. Think you could put motor oil in it and it would run on uh, that? It burned motor oil, sure. Huh. Uh, but you got to do it hot. Hot now. You can't put it in a, you can't start it on coal. It will not crank on coal. Nothing but gasoline. Uh -huh. so okay. Got then, it. like I say, you put it in the field, and if most fields ain't too big. You put one round around there in, in gasoline. And then before you get around, you get that switch valve, and you flip it over, and you burn on kerosene. Matter of fact, I'll tell you the difference between what the di reason we wanted to go that way, that John Deere A we bought in 1958, it was used, it was about 10 years old then. And uh, let me tell you, we, we uh, uh, put it in the field and put gasoline in it, and run it one day on gasoline, my daddy toted gas in five gallon buckets, 35 gallons of gasoline, and about six o'clock that evening, he said, park that thing, we are not going to put no more gasoline in. Tomorrow, we're going to start burning kerosene. So with, to move it on kerosene, we had to have a temperature gauge to work. Now to make it work, it hit, make the radiators run hot. So huh. we took barrel out bag, not paper bag, burl out. Back then, every fertilizer came in 200 pound fertilizer bags, burl out. All right, put one on there, Oh. And it didn't get hot enough. That was flowing the air down, going into the radiator. Uh, so I went back and got a miller to put it on top of it. Then it got the temperature up to 200 degrees. 200 degrees, it burned all day long and never missed a lick, just, as, just about as strong as gasoline. And then that day, I only burnt 16 gallons of kerosene against 35 gasoline. So see the difference in price? I mean, you ain't kidding we burnt kerosene from then on. So it was a working tractor. Yes. <laughs> and by the way, let's talk a little bit about some of the features here. Um, we got your manual transmission. So you got your first, second. Um, you got to twist the flywheel, I suppose. But you got second, and then you got your third. Mm -hmm. No road gear and no overdrive because it's not a car. But no road gear for this tractor. First gear was used for your bottom plows. Uh, speaking about your road gear, let me tell you why uh, John Deere put this thing right here. It's a accelerator. As you know what an accelerator is, everybody knows what that is. Yes, uh, Bill. Since they didn't put a, 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 a road gear in this thing, which would be a, a fourth gear. Yeah. That thing, well, they come here and added this thing here to override the governor. And it's the same thing as little kids back in my day grabbing over the, the governor and overriding that thing and make the engine wind out much faster than it's supposed to. Well, John Deere did it for the factory with this right here, and that would gag that engine almost twice as RPM on, and you could go down the road pretty fast then. That's why this thing's got a accelerator on it. That's John Deere built there. Huh. So, I ain't told you that before, so I'm getting, you get you it on tape now. Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh -huh. But here's the thing, though. Would it damage the engine, though, if you used it for too <laughs> it long? It didn't. <laughs> huh. I should I definitely test that out when, never done it. Mm -hmm. yeah, when we get this thing uh, for a drive again, I should definitely test that out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're going to see some footage right after like a few seconds of talking or whatever. You're going to see some footage of me driving this tractor before we talked about this. But yeah, just kind of looking around a little bit. And there's your hand clutch right there. It goes it's all the way. A brake. This right here is the clutch and this is the brake. It actually stopped the wheel. Yes. It, it actually stopped the wheels, but it, mm -hmm. it, that's the brake, but it's built into the hand, hand clutch. So when you brake the clutch, stop it, it automatically puts the brake on, and you stop it there. Yeah, so instead of having to hit the brakes like it, on a regular pedal tractor. It, you've seen it, you drive regular type uh, uh, tractors, uh, inline uh, engines, 
that has a foot clutch on it. You go to sh try to shift ge gears with the engine running at full throttle, you, you bash the clutch in and you want to get another gear and you're clashing the gears all the time because you've got to wait for that clutch to slow down for the gears to line up so you can engage it without scraping the gears. Well, John Deere built this brake in there so they can do the same thing here. Right here, they, what they, you want to slow this thing down to get this running the same speed as the gears is not turning. So you just pull that brake back and all of a sudden it, it stops it right quick and you can shift gears down. Hmm. So like a car pretty much or you would have to completely well, come to a stop? Well, see, this is before uh, synchronized transmissions. So mm -hmm. this is way before. See, synchronized transmission does it automatically. When you shift it, you, you shift it and you don't scrape gears in it because it's got what they call synchronizers. And they got to work. And what it does, it speeds up the gears to get them to both gears the same speed and you end up with in and it goes without scrubbing gears. And so that's a, uh, something that John Deere built way back. See, the synchronizers didn't come. This, this thing was made in 39 and the synchronizers didn't come out until uh, probably around the late uh, 50s, maybe early 60s, they started, a few started getting synchronizers. Back. So about the time when they switched from two cylinders to basically what you have over there, which is four and six cylinder tractors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like I was saying before, this is your hand clutch, the one that you grab, but again, that is the brake that you use to stop the mm -hmm. tractor just by, you know, instead of hitting a brake pedal. Because again, you got brake pedals, but these are mainly for helping you turn. It's mainly, mainly heavy shift gears. Mm -hmm. Here. Um, mm -hmm. This is your steering wheel. No power steering, it's just go straight all the way to the front wheels over there, which was tricycle type. This tractor, let's go talk about this a little bit. Some of them came, most of them, the most common setup was this right here, the tricycle setup. Then you had some with only one wheel. Those were meant for the mud, so you wouldn't get stuck and you wouldn't trap mud up in here and make a big mess. And even rarer than that, rarer than the one wheel design, was basically the wide axle. And that's probably the one to get, if, if you ask me, because you won't have the tendency to tip over like you do in a tricycle tractor if you drive it too fast. But obviously the better solution is drive, don't drive fast at all when you're taking a turn. Isn't that right? Correct. Correct. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. All right. Let me put this on your record here. Uh, a tricycle type anything, as you know, the last thing that went out, uh, Mr. Ralph Nader made every uh, three-wheeler Little boy, you call them these your little buggy cars right in the woods. Okay, I don't uh, know about those. Four, four wheelers. Yeah, the four wheelers. Oh, the four wheelers, three wheels yeah. on them. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Originally, they were three wheelers. Yeah. But see, they, they, it, it's because they were inexperienced people getting on it. They had never been on a three wheel. They've been on four wheels. They don't turn over as bad. And John Deere and all the tractors companies made their all the tractors the two rows a tricycle type because mm -hmm. look, they were raised on it. They knew the how to put. To know when not to turn. If you turn it too sharp, it's going to turn over, right? So that's why they made so many of them. But Ralph Nader, uh, uh, and he pushed it hard to abolish the tricycles for that because there was so inexperienced people getting on it and getting killed. And that's why they did it. And same way with the little uh, three wheeler uh, went to four wheelers on the little little goat mm. goat things. Uh -huh. And to bring this to y'all's perspective, by the way, Ralph Nader is the same guy, for y'all car guys out there, that killed the Chevy Corvair. Right. He wrote the book, what, um, what Killed the Corvair, I believe it was called, but whatever. He killed the Chevy Corvair, which was... In 1960, yeah. uh, out of Ford come out with a Falcon yeah. at that time. And it was uh, and the Corvair, was nothing wrong with it. My uncle had one, and it was nothing wrong with the thing. It was, it was bad on belts, I believe, but... Uh, other than that, it was a good vehicle, but it, they didn't like it because it, the engine was in the tail end, and when you on slick roads like ice, you mash on the brakes, and the thing turn around, and the tail end's going forward then. But on a, any other cars, the engine is in the front when you mash on the brake. The heaviest part is what's going to go forward, and that's what's safe, more safe about it, is keeping your safety first. That's yes. what Ralph Nader wanted. Get rid of anything that had an engine in the rear. <laughs> oh, so it's not just the Corvair. That's a new no, thing that, no, that uh, you know. The, the Corvair, nothing wrong with the Corvair. It was just like anything else Chevrolet made. It was uh, all right. Uh, yeah. But, uh, and by the way, back to the Model H here. This, this is before electric start. You have to crank that flywheel for the tractor to spin over. Magneto. Magneto. No mm. distributor. No distributor, yeah, yeah, I forgot no about that. No battery, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, you don't push a button to start it like in, you know, say a car, you turn the key or whatever. No. It's not your mom's Nissan Maxima. It doesn't press a button and you put it in drive and go. You gotta spin this and make sure you turn on the fuel, obviously. And then, you obviously make sure your spark plugs are plugged in. Yeah, that's plugged in. And in some of them, there's some flaps that are basically supposed to release. Uh, oh, yeah, you have to get a bigger tractor. The B and bigger John Deere's come with a uh, petcock on the side of a lever. You had to flip that. To It'd be somewhere here. To It'd release be the compression right because you're not man enough to turn the fly fill over because there's so much compression. Mm -hmm. The G's, I, I don't do them or D's. Mm -hmm. But I can do uh, a B real good. But an A is kind of tough too. But uh, uh, they, <laughs> you really got to have some muscles to pull that thing through. Yep. But, but let me tell you, it ain't how strong you are, it's how you, what you do to get ready to start. I actually, I can predict where the uh, uh, B's and A, anything's got the pick cock on, I can predict when it's going to crank. Because when you pull that choke there in and you pull it over and things get right, it's going to fog a little bit of gas out of that thing. When it see that fog of gas coming out, it's going to crank. If you don't see it, you can forget it. It will not crank. It's got to have some gas in there to crank it. And on the H, you can't see it, so we don't know that. So we just <laughs> try to do the same thing every time. But uh, it, it, remember, the gasoline, they don't, they're not the same thing every time. They're finicky. I mean, uh, uh, diesel's more accurate every time, you, same thing every time you turn it over. Uh, but uh, yeah. this is different. This uh, is a gasoline tractor. So, again, we cut the fuel on, mm -hmm. spark plugs plugged in, and there's no flaps right here to make sure if there's fuel thrown. Wait, let me explain this. This shut off here is one of my rigging the original cutoff was here and this right here you got off down here that was tied in with the fuel mechanism here mm -hmm. it's a switchable valve it switched from gasoline to kerosene and also then you flip it a little more to be off like the same thing as up here same huh. thing it's just a different valve that valve yeah. at one time we couldn't get no replacement parts for it, but now someone's making that valve mm -hmm. and so at this time here uh, I didn't even worry about trying to get one. I just rigged it so it worked. Yeah. So that's, All right. that's why I, well, originally it was supposed to be here. Yeah. Can I try to start it and see if it'll start? And again, we're not sure if it's going to start or not because we don't know if it's going to cast. Hold the camera this way. Oh, you want me to do it? Yeah, just hold it. Just hold it. Okay, now did I'm, uh, I ain't meshing up there. No, no, no. Don't mesh nothing. Very okay. Neutral, uh, the, red, the red dot blinking. Okay, we're good. Okay. Because now you gotta put it in neutral because this is not like a car where you can start it in gear, just have the clutch in. Right, yeah, you always shake it. Mm -hmm. Keep it in neutral, uh -huh. it's important. Speed you I'll throttle up a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. Up to get up above idle. Mm -hmm. Yep, you just get this thing above idle to let it right. crank a so, little bit. So hopefully We've different. run this thing again, like I said before this, and I have mm -hmm. videos of me driving mm -hmm. it. We're gonna shoot them after yeah, this. Put a little check on that thing. Just a little. Yeah, just be just a little. So, and just so hit uh for the check off. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now you kind of pull it through all the way. Not, well, not quite enough. Not quite, quite enough. enough. Right. Well, it's almost there. Mm -hmm. All right. Let right, me do it one more time here. Let's do it that way. All right, let's, let's get... What he's doing is he's adjusting the choke. That's the choke right there. This way is choked all the way. This is when it's hot. It's basically not choked at all. We're choking it right now. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll do it one more time and then we're going to take it off. off it's, we're going to flood it if we keep going. All right, let's go off now. Yep. Let's, let's see what it does now. Yep. Again, like you said, gas engines are finicky. And this they is are. a good example. They are, I guarantee you. That's what we got. Ah. Started. What he just did to get it to run like that was he immediately choked it and then he released the choke. And again, it started right away because we've run it before. And when we first tried to crank it, we couldn't get it start for nothing. We had to pull it with uh, one of the tractors. I think it's over there somewhere. But that's how you start any hand crank tractor. John Deere, two-cylinder, whatever. a John Deere H with manual transmission. This one though is a little different. 
That's not your clutch. This is your clutch. Here's how you're driving. Don't do nothing with your foot. Just put it in gear. First, second, and third. Okay? And here's your throttle. And here's your clutch. We're in gear. The clutch is engaged like you're pressing on it with your foot. But in this case, it's with your hand. All you do is ease off. Just like a car. Start moving. And then, it clicks. And you're off. Wanna give it more gas? There you go. That's how you drive a John Deere to a cylinder tractor. in their commercials, you can stand up, if you please. Alright, I'm gonna sit down. Oh. Another thing you ought to be careful of, this is a tricycle tractor. You don't want to go too fast on turns. You want to take it nice and easy. Now let's see you want to slow down. You pull on the clutch. I gotta click out and then slowly and gently come to a stop. And get it out of gear. Hit the brake. Two feet. One of hit the brake. One second. Just flip that open and it should stay. When you're done, you hit that brake. Flip it. Off the brake. Wanna get going again? Let's go in first. Now, let off the foot. We're easy now. Nice and easy. What he just did there was adjusting the choke. You can either give it more gas or you can give it less gas. So, we're not going to go in first. We're going to shift it out first and put it in third. We'll go a little faster here. And then, give it a little bit more throttle. And then, we'll push it. much, but that's how you're driving two cylinder John Deere. It drives good. They're fun to ride, they're fun to drive, especially with that pop pop sound. And again, stand up. Now we're going to make a, a right. So what you do, slow down. Tricycle tractors have been known to tip over on fast curves. And then you just click it and you're off. Drop.
have a John Deere two cylinder tractor with a hand flex. It's very easy. But you gotta put your mind to it. You gotta get used to it. Because we're done talking about a few things. However, let's bring up a few things worth mentioning. Your e-brake, how it works, is you got a little flap right here. You push it in, you twist it outwards to disengage it, and you let the brake off. But in this case, it's parked, so we're going to put it back in, flip it. Simple design. Just in case you couldn't understand it when I was explaining it while I was driving the tractor. And yeah, here's your drawbar, like I was saying. And yeah, that was pretty much the only most important thing that I had to mention, because obviously safety first, so you've got to know how to use a parking brake if you want to own one of these. And by the way, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. I'm sorry it's a little long today, but I promise you, you will never find a video like this one. And I had the owner come in here and give in his two cents from experience and knowledge to teach us all. So yeah, if you like this video, please leave a like. Leave a comment below if you want to see me do more videos on tractors like this. Probably get to see the owner. Heck, even, even come back to Mr. Collier here in North Carolina on Four Oaks. He's got tractors every day. So let me know. And in the meantime, peace out. Have a great day.